Jacob in the house already. How's it going, man? Hmm. Can you hear me all right, Jacob? Doug, how's it going, man? Looks better than last week. Yeah, it better. Got a little better connection this week, but I don't have my uh, I don't have my good internet hooked up yet. They won't be hooked up till the 18th now. So, Upstate Angler, how's it going, man? We're doing doing a review on the All Star Rods. No, Jacob is actually supposed to be doing that. Um, I think he said he was going to do it this month. Actually, BP Fishing, how's it going, man? Jay Basson. The Tackle Box TV. What's up, man? How's thanks for joining? Doug, how's it going? David? So I guess you guys have already seen on Facebook and Instagram and everything else. We are gonna have a pretty good giveaway tonight. So Steven, how's it going, man? We're waiting on uh 10 horse Monty should be here real shortly. So Jacob says, I got to start filming on it. It's coming. It's going to come out a little bit after Thanksgiving. So there you guys go. The All-Star Rods will, will have a review finally. Mox and Lures, how's it going, man? Orson Outdoors. Uh, we got a lot of topics tonight, man. We're going to go over a few different things. Like I said, I got a good giveaway tonight. So definitely going to get that going. Um, just kind of give you guys a little bit of heads up. I Got some new lighting we're going to try here, see how that works. Um, still got a crappy little bit of a camera on the webcam. Um, I'm trying to use my good camera, but it just it will not hook up to the computer right and stay going. I don't know what's going on with that. So, let's see. He's always running late. Yes, man, always running late. <laughs> No, I think he said he, he got off at like 6 o'clock, and he he lives about 25 minutes from here, so I'm sure by the time he got home and got changed and everything else, it, he'll be here probably next, I'd say next couple minutes, I'm sure. So Bob says, went to Perry County Lake, got blown out, white water on the lake. Really, I'm guessing you're talking white caps, I'm guessing, with the wind. I, that lake should be turning on pretty good this time of year. See, Jacob said he is full armor bassin. How's it going, man? Thanks for the yeah, the background. It's it's a little bit something different. Uh, just kind of working into it here. I've got some other stuff to do to it yet. I'd like to get my logo up here yet and some other stuff and have a few things in the works. We'll just have to wait and see what's gonna happen. Big show. What are we gonna talk about tonight? Um, a couple different things actually. One, the giveaway. Um Two, I want to go over a little bit of winter bass fishing with you guys. Um, I know we didn't – I wanted to go over fall a couple different times and just with the live stream messing up and everything, it wasn't helping. And then we just – we really didn't have much of a fall bite. So I'd kind of like to touch base on more of that winter bite because I think it's kind of typically what most of us are in right now. Um, I know my pond, it's down – it's already down in the, about the mid to the upper 40s. So it's, it's kind of in its winter stages. I mean, I didn't even get to enjoy a fall bite on that. And that's usually one of my favorite things of the year is to get on that good topwater bite in the fall. And, I mean, I tried it a couple of times. I just had no success whatsoever. So it just kind of skipped on past that, and that was it. So let's see. Doug says, haven't been on social media as much today. Been busy at work and took a long nap when I got home. So missed any post on the giveaway. All right, dude. Well, I will go over this real quick. So first off, I'm telling you, this is a pretty good giveaway here. I'll pull this all out here. All right. <clears throat> so this is all stuff I got from Ox and Lures. I'm telling you guys, if you haven't went to their website and looked at their stuff, I'm telling you guys are missing out. So these are both the, uh, the Chartreuse Shiner. It's got two different sizes here. I know the camera's really, really crappy. Sorry, guys. 
Um, let's see if I can get these up here a little bit quicker, a little bit easier here. Show up there. Um, but that's two of the chartreuse shiners there. That's in the swim jig. Um, let me get back here real quick. So also have two different sizes here. And like I said, guys, I'm sorry about the camera. This is really crappy. Um, uh, let's see if we get any better here. But anyway, that is, that's in the, uh, the three eighths ounce, the quarter ounce, and that is in the bluegill pattern right there. So two of them. Uh, let's move it on here. All right, let's see. So we got, these are two of the flipping jigs. These are both in the black and blue. Like I said, the three eighths and the half ounce. Got two of them to go. And then we go into the, uh, this is the other uh, flipping jig here. This is the crawl daddy and the three eighths and the half ounce. Or the, yeah, three eighths and half ounce. Like I said, guys, I'm sorry. I'll take a better picture of these and put them up afterwards. Um, that camera's just that junky. All right. And then also, I've got two packs of each of these. These are their bed heads. Um, these things, they, they come in a three eighths and a quarter ounce. And if you guys have not seen these or tried these, you guys are missing out. These things are unbelievable. They stand straight up, got a little rattle on them. Um, they do have, I don't know if you guys can see that in there, they do have the, the screw lock keeper on there which is amazing. You guys, that is one thing I really look for anymore is that screw lock keeper. It does save you a ton of baits. So that's that's all in. Like I said, I got, you know, two two packs of each size on the bed heads and then all those jigs and swim jigs. So, I mean, you guys are in for a pretty good giveaway. Like I said, that's that's pretty much everything right there. You guys can see it's, it's a pretty good giveaway. Um, now, as soon as uh, Ten Horse Monty gets here, we are going to step into something a little bit different. I'll show you guys this. Um, I went ahead. I ordered this. I want to see what the hype is about. Um, I hear a lot of different opinions across the board about, you know, who's the better box company and this and that. Um, I was actually offered a deal with Monster Bass. Um, I kind of turned it down um, just due to a couple different stipulations. But, I mean, that's just my personal opinion there it doesn't mean i won't go back to them or nothing like that but for right now i am not with any bat or any box companies out there um i strictly ordered this one just to kind of do a review on it see what's in it like i said i haven't even opened the box yet i'm gonna wait till or 10 horse monty gets here we'll open the box him and i both are going to go through these baits and kind of talk our way through what we think about these baits and uh, what lucky tackle box has done um, I've heard they've, they've really ramped it up and they've done better since they've got under new management and everything. So we're really going to touch base on that. And at the end of the night, that box, the entire thing is also going with that giveaway. Like I said, that is a pretty dang good giveaway. You're talking probably 80 to hundred bucks easy. So, um, it's going to run all week long. Um, my only stipulations on the whole giveaway is you're going to be one, you got to be on my YouTube account, you've got to be on my Facebook page, and you have to follow me on Instagram too. Um, Sunday evening, I will actually go through and I will do the, uh, I will pick a winner there, and then on Monday night's live stream next week, I will announce the winner. So somebody's going to get the, the whole bang here. So it's a, like I said, it's a pretty dang good giveaway, and uh, that's how you do it. Like I said, I'm not going to put it out there. If you guys can share any of this, uh, share the live stream. Um, I would say if you share anything, you know, let me know, take a screenshot at the end of the week, uh, of how many shares you got and everything else. And I'll even put you in for more, uh, chances to win that way too. So let's catch back up with a few, uh, comments here. All right. Let's see. Jeff Scar Scott, Scott's How's it going, man? Nice to have you in there. Sean says, Dawa Tattoo 100, anybody use them, want to switch all my reels to them. <laughs> Man, I've, I haven't heard anything bad about them. I'll say that. Um, I haven't personally used them. Um, like I said, I, I haven't heard anything bad about them at all. So, Mox and Lure says, what's fall? <laughs> That's exactly right. There wasn't any fall. So, Bill's in the house. What's going on, Bill? Victor, how's it going, man? All right. Sean says, Mox and Lures have any have any decals i'll put them on my boat there you go moxillers so hank snow in the house how's it going man i did uh i did get to check out some of your videos um 
and I'll send you a message later. Like I said, I don't know sure what's going on with uh, the uh, the YouTube deal. Like I said, I've had to subscribe to uh, Tackle Junkie, and I, I even told him the other day. I think I subscribed back to him at least three to five times. Um, I had to subscribe back to your channel, and there's been several, several others. I, I like I said, I don't know what what's going on. So uh, let's see. David says bed heads look great. Just ordered them yesterday. David, you won't be you won't be disappointed, man. Those things are they're nice. They're very, very well built too. Aaron in the house. What's going on, man? Tackle Junkie, how's it going? Doug Shelton says that is a very nice giveaway prize package. Yes, it is. Like I said, it's I'm gonna guess I would say probably 80 bucks at least, maybe a little bit more than that. And if you guys have been over to uh Moccasin Lures, you know, make sure you guys go over there. Um, I do have a discount code in there. It's just BYB, all in capital letters, and then 81. And uh, that will give you, I think it's, uh, I'll have to look and see. I'm not sure if it's 10 or 20% off. So it's a pretty good deal there. All right, let's catch back up here. Oh, do, 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 do. Some lures. All right, what type of camera are you using for the live stream? Bob, that is actually just my webcam on my laptop. It's pretty junky. It's not that great. Um, I keep trying to use my better camera, but for some reason it will not stay linked up on the USB. I don't know if it's – I think it's my actual cord, so I might look into getting just a regular webcam to use for this until I get monetized and I can actually stream from my phone. be a little better. Uh, let's see. One lost dude. Did you clear all the items in the giveaway? With your wife uh we don't need to mention anything to her man <laughs> aaron says caught five today after work on a spinner bait that's cool was that at your buddy's pond there all right so the tackle box tv let's do a big nate's bait and tackle and target acquired custom baits giveaway at some point dude you just let me know man uh you get a hold of me you got me you got me on facebook and everything else just get a hold of me we will definitely set something up i've got no problem with that at all Let's see, Captain Ahab in the house. What's going on, Greg? How's it going, man? Three dollar fish. Finally, I'm able to make it to another one of the live streams, dude. I appreciate you coming, man. The two one hundred is a bad to the bone. That's what Tackle Junkie says. All right, let's see here. Oh, let's see here, and young. Yeah, TJ, I think I'm pulling. Tell what's going on. Jacob says, I missed what was getting on the giveaway. So I will go over this again. And 10 Horse Monty just walked through the door. What is up, folks? <laughs> made it. It's a Mad tight squeeze back here, man. Oh, like go away. Background looks good. Yeah. Working on it. Got a long way to go yet. So. Oh. All right. Go lay down. What's up, folks? I made it. Get over here and let you in. It's totally good. We're doing this. Yeah, we're doing the webcam. So okay. our camera will not stay linked up. I don't know what's going on. If you just got here, we will go over the, the uh, giveaway again here. Since Jacob missed that there. Okay. So, first off the bat, it's going to be the moccasin lures. Like I said, we got the bed heads here. This is in the uh, the, the quarter ounce and the three eighths ounce. Like I said, guys, you guys really need to check these out if you haven't yet. It does have the nice screw lock on there with the rattle. These things are absolutely killer. Um, there's two packs of them each on there. You know, here's the other packs here. Go with that. Um, next up, is going to be the crawl daddy jigs these are the flipping jigs i've got these in the three eighths ounce and the half ounce and like i said guys i know they're a pain in the butt to see there this camera's just junk so uh i don't know if i show up any better no so got two of them um next up it's going to be the black and blue jigs like i said got there got three eighths on the half ounce in those um after that this is the bluegill swim jig and guys, these are killer swim jigs, I'm telling you. That's in the three-eighths ounce and the quarter ounce. So that's a bluegill pattern, really nice. And then, of course, one of my favorites is going to be the chartreuse shiner. Um, that I threw that quite a bit this year, I can tell you that. So, And that's also in the quarter and the three-eighths. So got all that to give away. And now the 10-horse Monty's here. I get to bust the bubble a little bit here. Um, like I said earlier, did order this. Guys, I am not 
in any affiliation with the Lucky Tackle Box at all. I've just heard so many comments on them and everything else. And like I said, you can see here, it's not even open yet. Um, we're going to open that up here on camera and kind of go through that and give both of our opinions on what we think of the baits and how they do with their boxes. Um, and like I said, that will also go with the giveaway, that whole box. So I'm not, I'm not keeping any of this stuff. It's all going to go to whoever wins. And that does end next Sunday. Um, I will pick a win, pick a winner Sunday night and I will announce it on the live stream Monday night. Um, and the main qualifications you got to have is one, you got to be subscribed to the YouTube channel. Two, you have to follow me on Instagram and three, be liking my page on Facebook. Um, that is pretty much the only stipulations I did say earlier. Um, whoever wants to share this live stream out there, the more shares you get, the more chances I'll put you in for the giveaway. So I appreciate any shares at all. So I'll tell you that guys. So let's see if we can catch back up here. All right. All right. So tackle junkie, you'll dig it, Sean. Best cast to the date. Box of lures. Doug says just followed you on Instagram and already got you on Facebook, of course, and YouTube. All right, dude. I appreciate it, man. All right. Uh, junkie, uh, TJ, 10 horse. Yep. Finally made it. <laughs> yep, hey, yeah. you made it on both ends. That's awesome. It's <laughs> coming from the house. So, it must be my daughter, Sophia. What's up, Sophia? Let's see, Tackle Junkie, I have not. Oh, okay. He's talking to Greg. All right. What's up, 10 horse? What's up? Ooh. Yep. Definitely, guys. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up in there. So what's up? Just got here watching Live Bass University tonight. Dude, you don't need Live Bass University. You got all the info you need right here. <laughs> all right, Tackle Donkey says, I've used the bed heads. Very nice. So there you guys go. Like I said, they, they are their top quality. I'll tell you that. Slurs, Tackle Junkie. I think we're about caught up here. Full armor bass and game. A bass catching drummer brother from another mother. There you go. What's up, Full Armor Bass? Well, darn, I don't do Facebook. Oh, man, I guess you're going to have to create a Facebook account. Or I tell you what, if you if you are strictly not a Facebook guy or girl, whatever it may be, I have nothing against that. Um, I'll gladly, if you go out there and share my on my video on Instagram or or something like that, you know, I'll still put you in for that, man. That's no problem at all. Mox and lures, white wheel fishing. Okay, that's the Arkansas. A truly special guest would be me, myself, and I on your live stream. Aaron, all you got to do is mention it, man. You can come on over. We'll do it. Ain't no problem at all. Yeah. It's about time, time to interrupt. Yeah, man. You know, <laughs> so my gig is a letter carrier. I work for the Postal Service. And this time of year, starting, well, in about mid-October, we start getting really, really busy. So uh, especially on Mondays, Mondays, uh, it's a 10 hour day for sure. And that's, that puts me at six o'clock. So um, like, a, like Greg said earlier, got off at six, got about a 15 minute drive to my house, changed, said hello to the family, you know, played with the dog a little bit and uh, got on the interstates about, it's about 30 minute drive, 25, 30 minutes. So yeah, so I made it and uh, I'm winding down right here live with you guys. It's good to be here. Real good to be here. Um, yeah, Greg was saying about the fall bite earlier, and uh, what it fall just, bite? yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it it dropped fast. I was kind of I was hoping this wouldn't happen because fall is one of my favorite times. I, I fish a lot of grass. Well, we both fish a lot of grass yeah. lakes, and uh, the bait moves into the grass and um, frogs and punching, and that's that's my two favorite ways to catch fish. And uh, it's it's happening, but it's going to go away quicker than I was hoping. You know, I'm going to have yeah. to move off to the jerk baits and. The, I would say we got maybe Jeez. two weeks, maybe two, three weeks. Maybe, yeah. If yeah. that, I mean, it's, I was telling them guys a while ago, and even here in my pond, usually you can get on a good topwater bite, you know, throwing spooks and stuff like that, and there was nothing this year at all. Yeah. I haven't hit anything. Those ponds cooled off really yeah, quick. Yeah, like I said, mine's in the mid-40s, mm -hmm. mid to upper 40s. I've got one of those little, uh, it's an infrared infrared um, temperature gun thing that you, you shoot a little infrared uh, beam, and I shot my pond the other day, and it was it was like 54 degrees and that was about a week ago. So we've had a lot of cold weather, so I'm sure it's probably high forties. Maybe I'm thinking, so I need to go down there and, and check it again. But yeah, it's just dropped really fast. Yeah. I just seen something tackle junkie put on there. Where's that there? 
Yeah, Mox Coolers. Yeah, all their all their stuff does have the uh, uh, Mustad hooks in them too. So I'm telling you, they're these things are absolutely solid. Mustad makes a good hook. Yeah, I mean, there is nothing wrong with these whatsoever. Um, I have said from day one, you know, they're they're flipping jigs in general. Um, I've got a couple open somewhere here, but um, just the absolute head design on them things is just unbelievable. Like I said, I get probably. 60 to probably 80 percent less hang-ups just because of that jig head so like i said if you guys are like throwing jigs and stuff like that you need to go try them out i'm telling you that head design alone is well worth it let's see jacob says aaron you should do a little ice cream with them like i said man he's just got to come over here we'll do it definitely tom says i was going to ask you guys what your day jobs were one down one down um Tom, I deal with something that I'm just as smart as. I I deal with rocks all day long. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I deal with a big stone. Uh, it's a fabricating and a distribution center. Um, we're one of the largest in the Midwest. Um, I deal with anything from boulders and leads that go in your yards to cobblestones to countertops. I mean, all kinds of different stuff. So we deal with quite a bit of stuff. Upstate says, so can you still catch... Fish in the grass with the water temps in the upper 40s. Well, I mean, you can. Um, I think I said, actually, I don't know if that video is dropped, so I may not say it just yet, but um, that's one of the things that I typically look for with lakes and ponds that have a lot of grass. Um, you have to keep in mind that a grass mat is a little bit darker typically than what the water is. So if you've got a bright, sunshiny day, that grass mat is going to heat up water a whole lot quicker than what the regular open water is going to. So you'll definitely get fat fish back up in there. And I know game fish is probably a lot more grass lakes around here than I do actually. So I'm sure he could probably tell you a little bit more about that as far as, you know, water temps getting down in the forties like that. Yeah. You can still catch them in the grass. They're still going to relate to the grass when it starts dying off. That's when they'll move out of the grass a little bit. A lot of times they'll sit on the outside edge. Um, but you know, once that water temperature falls, into the high 40s you lose your frog bite completely the punch and bite kind of slows down and it's it typically turns into uh texas rigs soft plastics moving slow through the grass um jigs work pretty good shaky head i throw a shaky head a lot in the winter you know i don't know if that's something a lot of people do but um that's that's a bait i really lean on it's real finessey and um it, you know a lot of times the fish are in a negative mood in the winter time and that that little worm i mean it, it, it catches a lot of fish but yeah, you can. They're still going to be relating to the grass. Um, the ideal situation in the in the late fall and, and the winter time with grass scenario and, and low water temperatures is some some form of rock. Uh, a lot of the lakes I fish have rocky points, um, man made riprap and stuff. So you've got some rock there that's holding some heat. You got a little bit of grass there, and those fish are going to be around that area, especially if there's a channel swing close to that and there's a little deeper water drop. They can sit out off that drop. And on those sunny days when the water temperature warms up a little bit, they'll pull up to that grass line and get up in the grass a little bit. So um, that's that's a couple of things I look for, you know, this time of the year on and on and through the winter. Pretty solid point there. So let's see. So Jacob says, how are the Gruden cranks? Uh, Jacob, I'll be honest with you. I threw the uh, the square bill a little bit. But to be honest with you, you would probably need to go check out. I know. Uh, Tackle Junkie's getting ready to drop a video on the review on his. I would go definitely go check his out first. Um, I probably won't do a full review on it. I'm thinking probably probably next spring. Um, I just, I'm not going to throw it a whole lot right now. I've got other stuff going on and some other baits that I'll be throwing, so I probably won't reach back to the square bill quite as much. The other ones, I, I will probably definitely wait till next year to start throwing those. Uh, let's see. Big show says shared and liked and all that other good stuff. All right. Good deal, man. Thompson's back in her bass. And if you remember last week, I said my fall bite was three weeks ago, dude, I'm, I'm not surprised. I really, I'm really not. Like I said, it's, I kind of figured this was how it was going to happen, but just kind of had to wait and see. So Tom says rockhead. Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Fred Trimstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever, dude. So Hank says, so you can collab with moccasin lures and make some stonehead jig or rockhead jig. There yeah, there, that'll work, man. 
he'll sink like a rock. Do you, do you remember for there was a short period where there was a company making a Carolina rig weight that was an actual rock? Do you remember that? It was a, it was like a no. I guess I didn't even see that. It was like a river stone. It was polished rock, and they had drilled a small hole through it, and they promoted it as it looking really natural because it was a, it was a rock oh, on I the can, bottom of the lake. And I can see it. I never bought one, but uh, I, I, I saw a few. Had of them. a pretty decent size. Yeah, I'm not. sure they had different. You know, like half ounce, one ounce. Oh man, I don't know. Don't say that too loud. I don't want my company getting involved in that. <laughs> I'll be out there with a Dremel tool every day drilling holes. Yeah, and they'll, be, they'll be doing the pet rocks too, yeah. from the 70s. Oh we, back. oh, we get a lot of people in there that want the uh, rocks. The rock, really? Oh, yeah. They yeah. Well, they don't talk a lot of A lot of teachers actually buy them for their students to uh, paint, hand paint. So. Okay, yeah. It's a pretty neat deal. But All right, let's see. So, so winter setting in, what are we going to throw? Hmm. Well, with winter setting in, I kind of keep it pretty simple. I'm either going big swim baits. Um, jigs. I kind of went over a video of that here. If you guys haven't seen that, you know, on the finesse jig or go to bit or go big. Um, those two there, like I said, the swim baits, and then also you know my jerk bait. Um, there's only a few lakes around here that I really typically throw a jerk bait in, just because of the water color, uh, the water clarity. Um, if you've got real dirty water, it's you're probably wasting your time throwing a jerk bait. I think most of the time, um, I think a jerk bait typically gets a bass from a, a little bit farther away range. Um, it sees that bait up there kind of struggling and that's kind of what they come to. Now that's my opinion. That doesn't mean that's the truth or anything like that. It's just my opinion. But I would say those are probably my top four winter baits right there. Yeah, if you know, he's talking about the jerk bait in muddy water and the last couple of years around here, we've got a heavy rain in the winter. And um, I know last year, probably in december we got a bunch of rain and mm -hmm. muddied up the water and it stayed muddy all the way through march and the jerk bait bite was pretty tough you you could still catch some fish though but you had to know where they were at where they were what they were relating to so for instance we we're talking about grass lines in the winter time earlier um and those fish will they want to be up against something when the water is muddy they just feel more secure mm -hmm. um so they're going to push up against that outside grass line what's left of it so if you if you know um, if you've got a honey hole on your you know your favorite lake and you know fish winter in that area, you already know they're going to be there. So there's your confidence part, even though the water's muddy. If you can make a cast along that weed line, work that jerk bait really slow. You'll still catch some fish. It's probably not your most productive you know technique to to go with, but um, you know it does still work. Um, the shaky head, like I just talked about, that's that's one of my things I go to in the winter. The A rig. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's, yeah. And um, I'm not a big finesse guy. Yeah, I know you're a big finesse guy. So yeah, I love. I just I like the I like eight pound test. You know, I'll, I'll tie a just a seven foot medium rod with a fifteen pound braid and then an eight pound test uh, fluorocarbon leader. Okay. Um, I know you mentioned the A rig, and that's that's one thing I I get questioned about a lot. Now, typically for me, an A rig, usually when that water's hitting fifty and below. If it's if it's fifty and dropping, I'm not throwing the A rig. If it's fifty and rising, I'm definitely I'm on the A rig. Okay. Now are you you still A rig all the way in the winter? I throw an A rig when I can't get them to bite anything else. Usually, okay. if I can catch them on a jerk bait, then I'll be throwing the jerk bait. But um, I, you know I haven't really noticed if the falling or rising if it makes much of a difference. Usually when I'm throwing that, it's already in the middle of the winter which stabilizing right. so I, I probably you know now that you say that i probably will use it more when the water's rising because i've already kind of got in the groove of fishing it throughout the winter right and you kind of want to keep that pattern going as right. long as possible so yeah most likely i would okay fish it into so the spring up there. see what we're at here so i ain't reaching across the whole time how far we were up there but i don't know we got off on a little tangent there um somewhere in this area yeah it works good in 30 degree weather um 30 degree weather well i would say probably not much of anything <laughs> it's probably froze by then uh yeah um, that's tough i would say if you've had some warmer days and it's dropping down to the 30s if you have clear water i'm definitely gonna say a jerk bite or so jerk maybe bait. he's talking about the actual air temperature 30 like you know the water temperature you're gonna have to go you're gonna have to yeah drill, drill a hole in yeah it can't water. be 30 yeah i was always yeah. talking about water or the uh, air temperature but i would say probably like I said, a jerk bait would probably do really well. Um, but I mean, we've both of us actually, uh, we fish, I mean, when it's snowing outside. So air temperature, I don't think really has much to do with it as much as the water temperature. 
Right. Um, I have fished uh, some of my big are my ending year tournaments and some of my the beginning of the year tournaments. Doing it's been absolutely sleeting and snowing. I mean, to where you can't even see what's on the boat because the boat's covered in snow. And we have tore them up. I mean, just literally tore them up. They've been some of the best days in the water. Um, but that jerkbait bite can be really good on those kind of days. Right. Yeah, definitely really can. Those fish are pull up a little shallower and they become a little aggressive. Yeah. They, go, they have a little feeding period. Yeah, I would say like, you know, <clears throat> our power plant like that we go to. Right. That's a phenomenal one for doing that. So sure. But it's got pretty good clear water. One lost dude. We rarely get water below 50 to 55. Where you at? One lost dude. That's nice. I wish, uh, wish we could say that. Yeah. No kidding. This one's from I the, uh, he's from somewhere South. Probably. Yeah. It's, I was thinking, uh, Georgia or something. I thought. Okay. THM as a letter carrier, how many lucky tackle box and Mr. Tackle boxes do you deliver, um, on your route? Well, he doesn't deliver any of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're all sitting in, house. Me in trouble. This is being recorded too. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I don't, I don't deliver a lot. There was a, uh, maybe one a month, maybe two a month, probably a year and a half ago or so. There was a lot more of those being delivered. So I don't, I don't see that many of them, honestly. Now I get plenty of other stuff. Uh, let's see. I get, um, tackle warehouse, you know, I see several of those coming through the mail, but as far as, uh, the, you know, the box companies, uh, I don't see a lot of those. I'm glad you're not my mail carrier. <laughs> All the stuff that comes there'd in. Be a, there'd be a couple lures missing out of the box. <laughs> they have uh, duct tape on the top. Yeah, we'll, we'll just see with the live stream. That's right. Yeah, damage during processing. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Let's see here. These are flying back to Mox. He's talking to TJ. Good farm ponds for 30 degree. Jacob, that's kind of the same thing. We just kind of went over there. Uh, let's see. He's talking tackle junkie. Yeah, they made a bunch of those sizes, never bought any either. I'm not sure what he's talking about there. Must have missed something there. Now he's talking about the Carolina rig rocks right there. Doug Shelton. Uh, yes, heard someone using rocks as fishing weights. I think someone made a YouTube video on how to make them. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'd really. You'd have to polish that hole really good, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, I would think it'd be tearing your line up. I guess if you got a diamond polisher or something like that, put in there. I know uh, Titan tungsten. I know that's one of their big things with their tongue with their tungsten weights is they do that polish on the inside. And I will say that was one of the things I really liked about theirs is it was just such a smooth hole inside and out. You didn't have to worry about it cutting the line or getting damaged. Yeah, that's the problem that they had with a lot of tungsten stuff when it first came out. That's why you had the inserts. And right. Stuff. Yeah. The the, the um, hole was burred up. Let's see why we're fishing. We are in the winter water tips here in central Indiana. Fish are around live grass and rocks. I will be focusing on northern facing shoreline to warm or, or warm and the most and hold active fish due to fish or due to the warmer water. Due to the warmer water. Yeah. Scroll that down a little bit. So I'm trying to look at I'm looking at a glare coming across the screen. Yeah. I can't hardly see it. Yeah, that's uh that's what you want to key on in the wintertime. You know, those uh North facing coves, um, that that sun's beating on them a lot more than the rest of the lake. So yeah, you can you can have some good days doing that. I don't know where we're at. Did I scroll too far here? <laughs> yeah, it scrolled way up there. You got a fast scroller. Yeah, it's a compliment. There it is. Okay. Okay. So how's it going from Somerset, Kentucky? How's it going, Joe? What's Thanks up, for Joe? joining. Ned Rig, yep. Steven says Ned Rig is a good winter bait. Yes, I, you know, I'm, I haven't thrown the Ned Rig a whole lot, but I know that that's uh, that's going to be a good season to throw that thing. I got some good baits from uh, Tack B. He pour, he's pouring plastic uh, plastic baits. Look him up on Facebook. Um, he's got some really cool little Ned baits that um, I've got. And I'm definitely going to put some time on them. I've got from here. I was going to show you, and I forgot what I did with it. Yeah. This white whale fishing says the glide baits, drop shot, and jigs have been my only, only producing baits as of lately. Yeah, it's kind of getting into this time of year. It's it gets a little tough. I'll say that until you actually figure out that the bass have moved out offshore. Um, once they do that, it's a little bit easier to find them. But then you're just targeting that school or that that couple groups of them that are there. 
and get them to bite. I mean, that's the hardest part. Um, I will say this is, in my opinion, where electronics will really pay off. Right. You know, in a, um, he's bringing up the drop shot. The jig and spoon is another bait that works good in the winter time. Yes. When you find those fish schooled up, you can, you can load blade, up in a hurry. The new, the new blade baits, mm -hmm. um, a little bit smaller profile, and you can drop it right down, just almost like fishing for crappie. Right, like the little silver buddies. Those things work pretty good. White whale says, jerk bait of choice. I'm going to have to say probably Vision 110. I mean, just because of how far that bait's come yeah. and the action to it. I mean, that's that's probably mine. But. They're, they're really pricey. You know, you're yeah. talking $25, which hurts. It really hurts. But they have, a, they have a unique action. It's a little bit different. I can't really explain it. I've I've been in the boat with my buddy Jerry, and he's got a 110 on, and I've got the RC Sticks, which is the knockoff of, of the Mega Bass, um, and it's about an $8 jerk bait. And I catch a lot of fish on it, too. It's it's a good jerk bait. Yeah. But when you jerk them right next to each other, that Vision 110 just does something a little bit different. It's got a little bit different sound. And um, he's he caught a couple of fish behind me on that day on that bait, so it kind of made me a believer on it. But uh, Lucky Crap makes good good uh, jerk baits too. You know, uh, I've got several of those. I like that little seventy eight, the SP. It's a smaller size one. You can throw that on eight pound test. Um, it's uh, real clear water when the fish are getting a real good look at it. And they don't want something so big. That's a that's a really good one to go to. So there's. Yeah. There's several. I, I would say, I would say, probably my, other, my favorite, my all time favorite, would probably be just the original suspending rope. Yeah. I it's mean, that, hard to cast, but yeah, but yeah they're good. They're pain in the butt, but yeah, yeah. It's, I think they're probably one of the most producing jerk baits out there up until they really started coming out with these top of the line jerk baits. Yeah. Six Cents makes a good jerk bait, too. Yeah. I started throwing mm -hmm. those last year. Let's see. Moving into colder temps, shad wraps and the flat sided crankbaits are still getting bites. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah. Yep. I I actually uh, that one Guggen down there, the Guggen baits I went over the other day. That's one of them I want to try in there. So, kind of see how that works out. Yeah, that Shad Wrap, and then I think Strike King makes something called a Lucky Shad that's smaller. Berkey, Berkeley Frenzy makes that's, a really small flat side yeah. male bait. I'll say it's like a. I don't even think it's two inch. Yeah, they're pretty small. They're they're uh they're a spinning rod deal for me anyway. I mean, I guess if you got the right bait caster and the right rod, you can pull it off. But you got to bring out your DC for that. Yeah, and you don't <laughs> want any wind. I'm telling you, if you do, you want to be upwind throwing down. Let's see. Oh yeah, he's definitely talking air temp. I'll make. Let's see what we got here. I'm standing there. We're not keeping up the comments too well, not at all. All right. Just a bunch of chatty Cathy's in here tonight. Yeah. Yeah, the air temperature, um, that's not going to matter too much. It's That's really about if you can tough it out or not. The only thing you have to deal with is frozen guides. It's a pain in the butt. And if you're fishing braid, it's below freezing. That The uh, water gets in your braid, and you will have a mess at the end of the day. Hank, yeah. I'm about ready to drive down to Florida and whip your butt. <laughs> Complaining about he says we had 81 today. Oh, About time we get a break. Talking trash. <laughs> Good God. Just rub it in from Florida. Yeah. I love the 50s. You know, I just don't love the 30s. But yeah. 80, 81 sounds pretty nice. Let's see, Florida Bassin says, I always did always did well on the Bass Pro XPS brand jerk bait, but I changed from front treble hooks out to the red ones, and the bass love it. I, I don't do that. I... Right? But it's I not hear a bad a lot, idea. I, I think mean. it's, you know, that's, that's one of the things I hear a lot of times that that's what triggers a bite. And then also I hear that's a target for them to hit because I think it's a bleeding spot. I just, I'm not fully blown into whether or not that makes the difference. I'm not saying it doesn't by any means. I mean, that's, if you're going out there and you're getting a bit better with that, by all means, keep throwing it. Definitely. What, what brand, uh, treble hook are you using full armor? Um, I, I use some red Gamagatsus. It seemed like they kind of started rusting out on me, that red finish. Um, I don't know if you had that problem, but I'm curious to see what you throw. Yeah, even Tackle Junkie says, shut your face, Hank. <laughs> so 10 4, so we're neighbors. Yeah, squirrels. We got some squirrels, definitely. I'll chase a squirrel for a while. Yeah. All right. So, oh, no, my wife's on here. One lost dude. He doesn't have to clear that with me. I'm nothing about them. So what he thinks is good is okay with me. So there you go, one lost dude. That's right. He's from the California Delta. Yep. Yeah. He knows all about punching and frogs in. Yep. 
So I tell you what, before we uh, get too caught up here, we're going to open this Lucky Tackle Box and see what's in here. All right. Kind of go over what it is. and oh, this I think my, my first my, opening, too. I've never, yeah, never opened one. My, uh, my mail carrier he stuck in your box, does he? not like me. <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to him. He, uh, he comes by and gives my dogs treats every day. So, all right, guys. Let's see what we got here. I'll open this up just for you guys. Like I said, I have not even opened this yet. I don't know what's in here. So, there's the first opening there. Got a nice little sticker in the wrap. Oh, I better do this down here before I spill everything. So, here's a card of what we got. All right. So, first off the bat, this is a little Rippin' Lips. Let's see what it says. Rippin' Lips Wobbler. Says price on it is nine ninety nine. Um, it look like a little. Looks so like that's a little, like a little footloose. Um, mm -hmm. Looks like it's a little, little shallow like a little diver, almost like a little wake bait. Yeah, reminds me of the. Uh, I don't know. What it does the, say the color on there. I'm the one minus. Uh, classy shad. Classy shad. Yeah, it's a fifty five mil millimeter, uh, eight and a half grams, whatever that comes up to. That's a quarter ounce, basically. Yeah, it's a small bait. It, it looks like the um, the baby one minus. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with the man's baby one minus. It's similar to that. It's kind of kind of fat, but this thing's gonna die probably less than a foot. Yeah, like I said, it almost looks like a little weight bait. Mm -hmm. They're calling it a wobbler. So, all right, guys. The next one is called the. Uh, it's from Down Home Lures. I'll show you guys that real quick. So, Hold upside down there. So hopefully it'll focus in. Slug type little pop are there. Popper bait. Um, let's see where's down home lures. It's called the Uncle Popper. Price is five ninety nine. Um, doesn't look like a bad little bait. No, it's a probably, blue color. Like probably that. something I'd use around a pond, definitely. Yeah, it'd be a good post pond color when the fish are on the beds and I don't know kinda... what size hooks those are, but those are pretty small. I will say that. Look like pretty tiny hooks. What's your opinion? On yeah, that? you probably need to upgrade those to. You probably have to go with short shank though if you upgrade it. Yeah, it's not much clearance there. Yeah, it's a good looking bait. So, and I guys, I will not open any of these. Like I said, we're going to give them away. So, you guys get you know brand new package baits. It's nothing short here. So, next one is the Crave baits. This is called the Digger. Um, price on it is nine ninety nine. So. That is the digger there. Like I said, sorry guys about the camera. This thing is just junk, but um, doesn't look like a bad little crankbait. I don't know what size, what depth it goes to here. It's like about well, it eight say. to twelve, probably. I'm guessing just by that bill. Yeah, that's kind of where I was guessing, but I don't know. Probably closer to eight. Yeah, it's got a. That's almost a see-through body there. Yeah, it's kind of a unique looking little crankbait. I kind of like that. It looks almost like a bluegill pattern there. It's got a little um, like a hexagon shapes scale yeah. on there. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys can see that with that crappy camera or not. But. Yeah, since he's not open, it's hard to see. It's a translucent with a little bit of touch of blues and and uh, orange, orange belly, a light orange belly, red belly. Okay. Looks like a bad little bait. No. Huh. I'll be dang. Well, I will have to say this. So they did come. This box did come with a box of KVD. These are the uh, must add hooks, the treble hooks. Um, these are the size ones. So that's not actually not a bad deal there. It's the, uh, I think the first name brand thing I've seen in here. So yeah, those are good hooks. These are gonna go on your spooks and maybe the small whopper flopper. Yeah, it's like maybe 90 size. Yeah. And then the last thing we have in there is called the uh, the Venom. I thought that was Phantom Fishing. I think it was on base. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> this is the uh, Venom Lures. Um, I'll show you guys here if you guys can see those. Uh, let's see. It says it's called the Prick. Nice. Um, going price looks like three ninety nine. Um, looks like a decent little package. 
Uh, not much on the, uh, well, I think they've got it backwards, actually. I think that's supposed to be turned around, maybe. But maybe not. Just a straight tail arm, pretty much? Yeah, it's it's just a, kind of looks like the, uh, it, I don't even know what, I don't know, I guess that's a six inch worm, I guess. I'm guessing. Doesn't say a whole lot on there about anything, really. But let's see if I can hold it up there for you guys a little bit easier there. Like I said, it's kind of hard to see in there, but I mean, that's pretty much what they are. Um, be good for like a drop shot or something like that or shaky head. Um, I don't know if they come to a point or not. Looks like they do. I don't know if that's a black. I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe I'll take them out of the package and see. It looks like it's a it's a two tone color from what I can tell. It looks like it's got clear on the bottom and kind of a yeah I like can a, see it like there a now. smoke yeah. like a smoke color or something blackish smoke on the top. Pretty neat neat looking worm. It does have a pointed tail. It's got a it's got a flush front for a shaky head. So these will probably work definitely. So it's a good box. Get your thoughts on that. So fifteen bucks for a box. Yeah, it was I, worth it definitely. I didn't. Yeah, I don't think it did too bad. No. Um, like I said, the only thing, the only thing I will say, um, I know they're big on name brand stuff. I'm going to have to say the only thing I see in here name brand is going to be the KVD, the must add hooks. Um, that was the only thing name brand I really seen in there. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen this Crave before, but there, yeah, that's might be more of a regional, regional bait. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say they're not all name brand, but they're not big name brands by any means right. and not stuff that we typically see around here. But uh, like I said, Guys, that will definitely go in that giveaway. I'll put everything back in here as it was. Um, That's kind of the beauty of these boxes, though, is that, you know, you get a chance to throw things that aren't something you just go to Academy or Walmart and buy. You know, they're kind of – if it's good quality stuff. But, um, you know, some of that stuff, the, the fish in your local water probably hasn't seen that. So Right. You might not. I've said it a hundred times. I mean, if you've got a pressured lake – or pressured body of water of any type, you know, my pond in particular, I talk about all the time is you, you can go in there, somebody brand new that's never fished this thing at all, come in there with something that's off the wall that those fish have never seen and just wreck them. Yeah. And I'm throwing my confidence bait and not even getting bit because I've seen it a hundred times. So it's definitely, definitely worth it. So let's see if we can get caught back up here a little bit. And I just took a jump on me. Yeah, you're back up. Let me, uh, real quick, I'm going to show yeah, you real quick. Go ahead. I'll, I'll catch the back up on here somewhere. So I got a few a few different baits. Uh, the company is called Bite Me Baits of Kentucky. Uh, they got really good product, and I've, I've been kind of testing these out. And they got a bladed swim jig that, I don't know if you can see this. Let me hold it up. I've just got a little rage swimmer on the back of it. But it's got that, that coffin-type shape blade on the front um hand tied skirt you know wire wrap skirt it's got a nice beefy hook on it and this you know i've been throwing this around a little bit i just got these about a week ago and i've been checking them out um this bladed swim jig's got a really tight wobble to it you know like a, a chatter bait is kind of real erratic this thing's really finessey you know it's it's a it doesn't it's got, as much no it doesn't it's it's kind of nice i kind of like it it comes through grass really well because it is because it doesn't get all sideways and that hook doesn't have, you know, a chance to grab stuff. So it uh, rips the grass. I like this, uh, the head on it. I like, I like the, the head shape of this, you know, it's the, the way the head sh shaped it, uh, it bumps cover and kind of deflects over it. So this is a, this is a pretty cool little bait. I'm just kind of working through it. I'm going to have some reviews on some of this stuff. And then the other thing that I've got is a, uh, a spinner bait that they make. This is a, a bite me baits of Kentucky. And this is this is their Bloodline series. The Bloodline series has a lot of red tied into it, and that looks almost like it's too much red. But when it gets in water, it really kind of it kind of blends in with this skirt, and it almost makes the skirt look kind of um, thinned out, and it gives it a little bit more action. So this is just a uh, another thing I like about this is he's got this the line ties mm -hmm. looped, you know. And I don't know if you guys have ever had a problem mm -hmm. with a R style bait. Um, your line will slide down. A lot of times it wants to slide down on the head, especially if you're ripping it out of grass. So not a lot of, you know, companies are, are using this loop, which I, you know, I kind of like that. I've been throwing this around. I made one cast, a couple casts with it the other day. And uh, first cast, I got slammed by a bass. And uh, so 
another thing, I don't know if you can see this. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a review on this and I'll probably get some close ups of this. He uses these little beads that are kind of flat. You know, I don't know if you can see that, but most beads are, are uh, round. These are flat and it gives it gives that front blade a little bit different action. It kind of stutters a little bit and it, it spins. It rotates a lot slower than the than the rear blade. So um, I like the head design, too. It's kind of flat. It, it goes through cover really well. So I'm like I said, I'll be playing around with these, but I thought I'd bring this up. Uh, bite I, me, Bates of Kentucky. I definitely, definitely like that ring up here. Yeah, it's a um, great idea. I was, you know, I was actually talking to the guy who was fishing like in the Ozarks. I was fishing the War Eagle spinner baits, and the bass were hitting that bait so hard that when I go to set the hook, my my whole entire arm was bending out like this mm -hmm. and constantly sliding down. Well, if it starts sliding down, getting into these or going the other way, either way, you're taking a chance of ripping that knot out every time. Yeah. So if you got this, you know, I don't care if you bend that thing wherever you want, it's going to stay up there. And that's I really like that. Definitely. Yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah, definitely. I like that. So anyway, just thought I'd show share that with you guys. All right, so let's see. Send you something after that. Big Show says, I've never tried the Alabama rig. May have not. May have to give it a whirl. Oh, man, I tell you what, it's that bait is very, very fun to throw. Um, I will definitely say make sure you got a little bit of the right setup for throwing that, or you will wear your arm out all day long yeah, trying definitely. to retrieve that. Yeah, you um, don't need too heavy of a rod, but you, you definitely – you know, get a low gear gear ratio right, reel. Right. Don't try to be throwing it on a seven or eight gear ratio. Um, you'll wear yourself out in probably 15 minutes doing that. I would say uh, typically when I throw mine, it's I think mine's on a uh, I think it's a five to one. It's one of the lower gear ratios I have. Mm -hmm. You can use a, like a seven four heavy is a good rod to start out with. Um, do you use braid or floor or do you do both? I well when I when it first came out. I strictly went braid because by the time you get it all set up and everything, you're talking 70 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and just to tell you guys a little bit of how this went. So this has been years ago when they first started coming out and getting real big. I bought everything. I bought all the swim heads with it and everything. Like I said, I had about 70 bucks wrapped up in this thing. Um, had it on the best rod and reel I knew. Went to go throw it down at uh, Barkley Lake. We were fishing tournament down there. The first cast I made with it at the time I had – the rod that I had had a a uh, bait keeper on the back of it, and when I wind up and I go to throw that thing, and as soon as I did, that line come out and hit that thing and caught it and just went, and it was gone. I watched really? that thing sail. I mean, I never even got the first cast. First cast. Oh no! So that was the end of that one. So it took me probably almost a year before I bought another one because I I didn't want to be out seventy bucks that quick again. Yeah. But uh, once I got it um, and fished with it a few times. I'll tell you the main thing I found with those is is your bites on them are just so hard hitting. Yeah, they knock um, the crap out of it. Yeah, I mean they just they, yeah. they annihilate it. And a lot of times you'll feel that second fish grab hold of it too. So that's another neat deal to go and fish in those is and keep reeling when you get bit. Yeah. Keep reeling. You don't really have to set, you just keep reeling and it'll load up. Um a flash mob junior is a good one to start out with. It's really common. Go with some eight ounce jig heads with like a four to five out hook on it. And the caffeine shad, um, little Kitex, you know, in the, like the 3.8 range. Um, skinny dippers, I like the small skinny dippers. The, uh, Anything that's shad yum, in color. Yum. Uh, yeah, the young money minnows. The, those yeah, are popular. I can't even hit another one. Um, but any little swim yeah. bait, you know, whatever color you feel confident in. And, um, you know, a lot of people will put that center, the center one that sticks out, they'll put a different color on that just to give the fish something to key in on. You know, most of the time they hit, they'll hit that back one. You know, it's it's pretty crazy how that works. Yeah. You know, they hit the bottom two or you the see, back Yeah, one. like you said, throw a different color on that one or something too. You mm -hmm. know, always triggers bites. So, let's see. Aaron Wetzel says, anyone else in here tonight fishing BFL tournaments this year? If so, what division? I finished in the Illini division. So, if any of you guys fish that, let him know. Um, let's see. I'm love glad they lowered the prices. Says love the 78 S SPs. Yeah, those are good jerk baits. Really good jerk baits. I just been I've been throwing them around the last couple of years and caught some pretty good fish on that jerk bait. Try to do this easy so we don't lose our spotter. I like the bluegill color. They got a it's the BG gill, I think is what they call it. That's a good color. Upstate Angler says feather trouble on a jerk bait. 
or no. I typically don't ever put a feather on that, but I mean, yeah, I, I've got some, I've got them both ways. Normally I don't put one on there, but, um, I have experimented with it. I've tied up some, like some size eight gamakatsu and, and tied up my own, uh, feather treble hooks. And it's, it slows the bait down. You lose a little bit of the action. It kind of kills a little bit of the action because that feather's got some drag, but yeah, man, I mean, you know, I'm sure it's going to work just fine. I haven't really, honestly, I haven't given it a, enough chance to tell you one way or the other. Yeah. I know my pop art, my poppers and stuff like that. I definitely have a feathered treble hook on the back. But yeah. I think that's more of a set and still type only before any tips. Um, I haven't thrown them much. Um, if I do, I'm usually around a lot of rock and I will use some type of stand up head. Um, that is the one thing I can tell you. Um, I've just had better luck with that. Um, I know there's a lot of guys that throw tubes and they'll put some type of, um, I've, I've seen a lot of guys use, uh, what do you call them? The earplugs. They'll put earplugs down them and they'll make them stand up then too. Yeah. So I, that's the only way I've had a whole lot of luck with them. I don't really have any luck with dragging them or anything like that. But who was asking that question? That was uh white whale fishing. Okay. Yeah. That's um, Greg out of Indiana. Oh, what's up, Greg? Um, I fish a tube a lot. I fish the stupid tube. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's that's where the jig head's inserted inside the body of the tube and the hook comes out. It's kind of a kale style hook and then you can Texas rig it. Um, my buddy Charlie Harden, he used to own Charmer Bait Company and they, they make a really good tube if you're looking for a tube to try out. Good color is called Deb's Dynamite. It's really hard to beat. It's it's a kind of a green pumpkin with some orange glitter in it and it's a good all around color. They've got they got the big easies, another good color. They've got several colors, but that that's a really good tube. And um, when you're when you're fishing that stupid tube, the advantage of it is it's not an exposed hook, and you can throw it around wood and stuff just like a traditional Texas rig. So um, that'd be my my recommendation on that. All right. Let's see, Tim Smith says going into the single digits in Illinois, Tim. Keep it over there. We don't want it in Missouri. <laughs> Keep all the single digits you want. So Steven says small scrounger head is also good in the winter when they're schooling. Okay. Yeah, definitely. If you can find them schooling, absolutely. I can see where that'd really play out. Yeah. I say most of the time in the winter, I think when I find them, it's usually three or four here, maybe six of them, something like that. I really don't get any big schools, but um at I mean, least not the bigger quality bass, not that I've noticed. I've I seen a lot of buck that, bass, you know. That small scrounger, scrounger head. head more. I've thrown I've thrown the bigger one, like the three quarter one ounce with that big jerky J, you know, five yeah. inch or seven inch, like on the ledges and stuff in Kentucky. See, no, I'm big, I'm real big into the uh the Shadowlicious. Shadowlicious, yeah. Okay. That thing has got a, just a ton of roll to it. I really like that. It, it kind of has that same that same feature as that scrounger head without the head. You know, mm -hmm. it, it just just rolls back and forth and really hunts. I really like that. So, let's see, Chris says six cents per Vogue 106 is an awesome jerk yep. bait. That's the one I was talking about, Chris. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, the bait man, he really, really, really shines on that. He really loves that provoke. Yeah, it's a good, good bait. <clears throat> you should give the, your best half a nickname. Jacob, she's got a nickname, but I'd, I don't even touch it. <laughs> let's see, it's one lost dude. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> I've had a lot of luck using the tackle HD of the. Tackle HD Crawl Dad and the Green Pumpkin. Now, is that – um you talking about now, one lost dude? Of course, not that you get any bad weather, but <laughs> you're not in the 30s and 40s like we are. Is that a uh, like a soft plastic bait, or is that more of a crankbait? Like tackle HD Crawl Dad. Yeah, what is that one lost dude? Is that a, is a soft plastics or – Hank wants to know what part of Florida. Or Hank's in Florida. I think Hank is around Orlando, if Orlando. I remember correctly. Okay. So the problem is interesting. After a while. So he was answering your question from earlier about the red treble. Okay. The right. made the rust after a while. Yeah, so. yeah, full armor. Uh, I, I was finding that problem too. So I kind of got away from him. Moxon says, anyone else's feed pausing every few words or is it just mine? Anybody else experience that? That's the first time I heard anything about it. Whoa. Hang on a second here. I don't know where we were at here. But we were way, way beyond. Yeah, right there. Right here we go. 
No, no glitches on my end. No issues on my end. Let's just be mine. Thanks, guys. Moxon, I, I hate to hear that, but also I'm glad to hear that. That's just your end. Somebody's talking about the Shimano DC. State says the problem with the oh the lucky tackle box. If you find a bait you like in the box, you can't buy more. That's the reason I would rather monthly subscription to find new baits. Hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Like I said, I, I just strictly did this just to kind of see what they had. Um, I wasn't here to bash the box. I wasn't here to promote the box or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to see what the hype was about. Um, I know they've been putting out there that they really up their box and everything else since with everything that happened with that company. Um, I can't sit here and say that I'm really, really impressed with it. Um, but I'm not disappointed either. I mean, it's 15 bucks. I mean, that's to me, I think it was well worth 15 bucks. And like I said, you're going to get something in there that you're not going to be used to throwing or something you want to throw. So it's going to push you outside your boundaries to throw, throw something new and try something new. So it's really going to make you a better angler doing that. Let's see, ripping lips, generic brand for nine ninety nine. He was talking about that bait that was in here. I think that was nine ninety nine, being a generic brand. Oh, yeah, it's kind of a kind of pricey, I guess, for a generic. Brand. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah. Let's see, he's answering Tom. What's y'all's opinion on a quality spinning combo to purchase? Um, I know I don't preach much on the quantum style stuff, but I would say quantum's got probably some of the best lower end <clears throat> spinning setups, I think. Um, I've, I've played with quite a few of them. Now, don't get me wrong, I had one out and fished with them. But, I mean, as far as going in the stores and looking at them and and seeing what they're what they're made out of and everything else, I think Quantum has got a pretty good setup there. Um, Luz is another one that's got a really good setup. Um, it's really going to depend on what you want to spend. Um, I don't spend a whole lot of time with finesse fishing. Gabe does a lot more finesse fishing than I do. He could probably tell you a lot better of a, a real setup than I could. Um, but like I said, I would probably go Luz or Quantum, but that's just me. Yeah, that that uh. There's a spinning rod. I think it's made by, I'm not sure if it's Abu, Abu Garcia. It's the presidential, the president. That's a real popular spinning rod or spinning reel. And I think that's, that's for around 50 bucks. Um, I throw the Saharas, the Shimano Sahara. That's my favorite. And that's, that's about an $80 reel. Um, you know, and then, then you got to add the rod on top of that. But, um, Lou, like, like Greg was saying, Lou's makes a pretty decent combo for, you know, around 70, 80 bucks. Um, so, you know, the main thing is just to go into the store get a feel for it, see how it's balanced. Um, you know, check out the rod and see if it's something you can work with and go from there. Yeah. I was looking for that one on here. I know they've got the smoke, but that's, that's a little bit more pricey. Yeah. Uh, looking for the other one. That I'd seen. Uh, the, the Daiwa Tatula. Sometimes they'll run those on sale. I bought one at Academy for 50 bucks, the spinning rod. And that's, a, that's a sweet rod, you know, so potentially you could get a, there you it know, is. $50 rod and reel. Yeah. Or, yeah, the, the quantum en energy. The it's a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I would get the Sahara. Um, if you're looking to spend a hundred bucks, the the Shimano Sahara is about eighty bucks. I've got like five of those, and I've had them for a long time. They're a solid reel. Either the Sahara I, or go all the way up to the Stratic. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I that's tell you my what, opinion. that's I mean Shimano. You can't, in my opinion, I think are some of the most solid reels yeah, out there. They're good reels, definitely. I don't think they're not one of them companies that go out and just release a bunch of different stuff, stuff in one year. I mean, they sit down and nail it down. You know what they want to do and what they want to design, and I think they, they come through with it pretty well. Um, let's see, former bet. Let me answer white wheel. Always put the red hook on the front. Tom says. So I like I said, I've I've heard that too. You get a little better quality bite that way. A little better hookup ratio. Amen, Tom. Tom's talking about the umbrella three wire rig is good to start off with to learn. Yeah. Yeah, something a little bit smaller. You need one, you don't have you know $70 in it like some idiots. 
just yeah, to throw one time. <laughs> and you got to be aware of your state regulations too. You know, I think Missouri, it's a, yeah. two hooks, you know, so you could have, you could have a five wire rig, you could have three dummies and then two actual hooks. Um, Illinois, I think, I don't know what their state rule is, but like Kincaid, Lake of Egypt, uh, I think Wren, there's four or five lakes over there where you can throw all five, you know, right. arms with hooks on them. Yeah. Sean and I upstate angler on here. We were just talking about that last week. He was talking about getting that, and I told him to make sure he checks his regulations up there because it's it's different all over the place. Yeah, it is. All right. Hog farm. He's talking about hog hog farmer umbrella rig. Yeah, they. Yeah, there's uh, who somebody was promoting the heck. I think it may have been Bateman actually was really promoting the hog farmer stuff. Mm -hmm. Thursday supposed to be twenty six degrees. Good God. So we can keep that. Yeah, I've got a tournament in two weeks over on Cedar, and I'm hoping we don't have to deal with that 26 degrees. We, we <laughs> fished one last year, and it was 26 degrees in the morning. Yeah, nothing like and dipping your rod tips down the water to get them thawed yeah, out. Yeah, it didn't get above freezing until we started at 7, and it was like 10 o'clock before it got above freezing. Well, and it was just a mess. It was so hard to fish, painfully slow. You know, with a jerk bait, you're throwing it out, and you're – Jerk in. By the time you got your you can bait hear, halfway you can, to the boat, it was you can hear up. your line yeah. grinding and yeah. And I throw it on eight pound tests, so uh, it's not good on your line. Yeah, David says three hooks in Pennsylvania. Okay, three hooks in Pennsylvania. And then Whitewell says three hooks in Indiana too. Seems to be the going rate there. Phone came back. Computer's still refreshing. Hmm. Huh. I, I hope it's just on your end, Tom. Hopefully, everybody else is doing all right. Seems like they are. Big Show says I'm in Virginia. I'm sure there's some kind of regulation on regulation on the A rig. Yeah, like I said, I'm sure, pretty sure everybody has one. Tom asks, uh, "Have you heard of skinning the shadowlicious to get more action out of the tail?" Yeah, I've done that a couple times. Um, there was a company called um, the swim. It was called Bass Magic. It's right about the time when um, Scott's World Tackle and what was the other real popular swim bait that was hard to get a hold of there for the quite Huddleston? a while. No, it was a soft hollow belly swim bait. I can't remember, mm. but th those those swim baits were real stiff. You know, they were almost double dipped, and the plastic was real thick. And you had to actually skin those to to lighten them up to get some action out of them. But yeah. um, and that's one thing to keep in mind in the winter. You know, bass tricks, bass tricks. Yeah, is that what I'm thinking? Is that, yeah, that bass right? tricks. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, people don't understand when you get when you get really really cold water like that, and you're throwing swim baits in the winter that plastic gets really cold and it will not move as much. And by skinning them, you'll get that little bit of movement out of that tail. Um, that is the one thing that uh, Huddleston swim baits just absolutely blew the market away with was their actual plastic that they use. It's so soft and it did not change with that colder water. I mean, that big, big tail on there, I mean, it's still got movement to it. So that's where them guys really stood out and above and beyond everybody else. Yeah. Let's see. Kai Tech do pretty good in cold water, though, from where I you yeah. think or not. I think they do. Yeah. Um, typically, where I'm, I'm fishing a lot of deeper stuff, and it's so slow that I want a bigger bait. But mm -hmm. I know the uh, the boom boom tails; those are another one that you've got. You have to skin those down. Yeah. Or they will not, not move. One lost dude says the crawl dad is a soft plastic on a jig. Three inch. Three inch, okay. There's some really good things about the MTB box. Yeah, Jacob, I know uh Tackle Junkie, he still he still uh promotes MTV quite a bit. Says they got some pretty good salt solid stuff, so um moccasin lures. Uh how is the blade connected to the head on the chatter bait? Um oh, are you talking about the, the bitey baits of Kentucky? I'll show it to you. It's it's uh you know what it's on the actual eye. He doesn't use a split ring. It's just molded onto the eye. I don't know if you can see that. I'll hold it up there and see if you can see it. Yeah, here, see if you can put this behind it. See if that'll help there. Well, I'm gonna get my help. hands in. Yeah, there you go. That might focus it on a little bit. Let's see. Or not. It's you can see that. Yeah, it's just straight on the eye. That's how he's got it set up. No split ring. That's kind of what I was looking at a while ago. Yeah, I'm sure that's that's why that has that tighter. Exactly, you're right. That's yeah. it gives it more of a finesse deal. 
um, which is, you know, I think you need both kinds. You need a wild and crazy oh, one, and then you need something more fancy. That's, just, that's no different than, you know, your crankbaits. Sure, you know, like sometimes a flat side. You, yeah, yeah, sometimes you want that real tight wobble, and other times you want that real wide wobble. Looks like it's hunting more, so. And actually, you know, we were talking about uh, Lucky Tackle Box. Um, Bite Me Baits of Kentucky was trying to, I think he's got something going where he's going to be putting some of his baits in some of these. Well, that'd be cool. Up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think he's working on that right now. So let's see here. And you go put him back out. Tom's having problems. I hope you get that figured out, Tom. Sorry, that's going on. Um, hopefully here in a, what, a couple weeks, you said you're going to have? The 18th. It's okay. supposed to be, like I said, they're supposed to hook it up, and the guy showed up like really early and said he had no answer at the door, so he had to reschedule, and then the next available schedule is the 18th of November. So I hope I have it before then, but if not, that's when it to be. Steve, and, Steven's saying they'll lose Mach 1 spinning, so that's a, that's a good setup, I guess, Steven. Yeah, like I said, I, I have said it a hundred times, if not a thousand, you know, when it comes to lose reels, it's hard to go wrong with them. It really is. Sorry, man. Stuff over. No, that's all, that's all good. Um, Put that stuff down here. Uh, Mike's, or Tom's talking about Carl's, the Carl subscription. Thanks for trying to Carl's. Yeah, you can't complain about Carl's. Like I said, I belong there too. Um, for I mean, it's a very, very small price to pay all, all year long. And like I said, I got my money back in no time. I mean, it didn't take nothing. Um, especially with the free shipping and everything else. You know, I, I order a lot of different stuff, and you constantly got to pay shipping and stuff like that. Um, with Carl's, you don't have to worry about the shipping, nothing like that. Even mocks and lures. Anytime you order anything over 50 bucks, you get free shipping there, too. So, That's I nice. mean, that, that shipping really, really is nice. So, you know, make sure you guys are looking for that. With the boxes, I know that comes with free shipping, too. But you still don't ever know what you're going to get. Yeah, Chris is talking about the... Um the HD crawled ad. They use a 3D print based on a real crawled ad. Um, here's David. Yeah, the Fluger president. Yeah, that's the reel I was talking about. That's a really popular spinning reel. That that model has been around for ever. And I know a lot of guys that trout fish down in Montauk, they they use that reel. Yeah, mine finally bit the dust. Did it? It may have had something to do with me dropping it in the mud, though. That, yeah, that's not good on them. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't by choice, and let's just say my whole backside was muddy with it. <laughs> and I may have sat on it. So, Tom said in Illinois, there are a handful of lake regulations that allow the five hooks on the rig. Yeah, that's, uh, I know Kincaid and Egypt are two of them. They're shutting down five power plant lakes in Illinois. I heard they were shutting down Carlisle. Um, I'm hoping Carlisle, they're all coughing. Yeah, um, Lake of Egypt was a talk a little bit. Yeah, that's what I heard last year. That they were talking about that. Yeah, well, I, I hope not. Yeah, um, you know, but I, Tackle Junkie was talking about that, and and that could have a positive outcome as far as the fishing pressure being lessened. You know, if they shut that those lakes down, yeah, you're not going to have it all winter, right? Yeah, they're going to freeze up, and those fish are going to get a rest. And, yeah, you know, come ice off, you're going to have some pretty good weeks. But then again, I look at. You know, I look at the one we typically fish a lot, and it's always got good quality bass in it. It does. So it's hard to say if that would hurt it or help it. I don't know. It hurt me for sure because I need to get out. <laughs> yeah, <I agree. laughs> of course, the last couple crazy. winters. Yeah, I would say go stir crazy in the house. Yeah. There's only so many times you can clean your reels and go through your tackle. Yeah, I can't catch anything in the bathtub. Just, I keep trying. Yeah. Let's see. What lure... Uh, what lure do you not have confidence in? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, hmm. It's got to be something I haven't thrown before, which I don't know what that is as of now. Uh, you know, honestly, I struggle with uh, like the the six XDs and the ten XDs. I don't throw them enough. I'm usually I'll throw them a little bit, and I've got plenty of them, but I just um, I haven't committed a full day or two throwing those and I've caught plenty of fish on them. Um, but I usually, I usually end up going to like a, a big swim bait or a jig or a hair jig in that same situation. Um, so I'd say as far as confidence, I don't, I don't have confidence on those deep diving crankbaits like I need to, I just need to, I need to force myself to fish them to get some confidence in them. Greg, you got one or I, I would definitely, definitely have to go with a jerk bait in open water. Okay. 
that, that's probably my biggest one right there. Um, I see guys do it all the time. I mean, you even do it too. And I just, I have no co zero confidence in that. Yeah. I mean, I can get, like you said earlier, get along a grass line or get along some type of, you know, a bank or something like that's got a, a steep drop off or something like that. Then I, I can do it, but out in open water over different like humps and stuff, I have no confidence. Feels like you're in the desert. Yeah. I just, <laughs> you know, I, I take guys out all the time in the middle of summer and fish humps or, you know, deep rock parts and stuff like that. And they're, they're looking around like, where do I throw? And, you know, I'm trying to explain to them. And now I know how they feel because I'm out there, you know, in the middle of winter doing the same thing. I'm right, like, I don't know where to, right. I don't know if any clue what's going on. Full armor Bassin, he's out of here, man. Good to good to hear from you, buddy. Take care. Yeah, thanks for stopping Channel's in. Channel's doing great, man. Keep it up. Let's see. Phone's still working, both refreshing. The computer I had to go completely out of YouTube. Man, I don't know what's going on. It's not good. See, Big Show says, I got some blade jigs from China. That the hook is attached in the ring where you can change the hooks. I'm kind of curious to see how well they work. Yeah. Yeah, let Rings us know, Big Show. Can change the hook. Yeah, it'd be, uh, I've seen those before. So it's like, a, it's on a swivel? Or not, well, I mean, the hook swivels? It's it's a, it's like a split ring where, where it comes out of the head of head, the jig, there'll right. be a split ring right there, with the, and then you can change the hook right there on huh. the back of it. Yeah, I think I striking makes something like that. So Tom's got the doomsday list here. Coffeine. Saint Chris, I've never heard of that. Baldwin, Powerton, and Newton. Oh, okay. I'm glad to see one's not on there. <laughs> Sorry about all yeah. the other guys, yeah. but <laughs> it's a bummer. But it could work out for the better. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys. Well, we're all caught up with comments and everything, and been on here about an hour and sixteen minutes. So I think we'll call it good. But like I said, guys, um, make sure you guys if you if you're not on the Facebook or something like that. Like I said, that's that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you're going in, subscribing to the channels, following on Instagram. If you can follow on Facebook too, like the page on there. Um, you know, make sure you're doing both of our channels. Um, after this is all said and done, I will drop a video tomorrow morning. I will actually put both of our channels in there, um, both of our Facebook page. I don't. You don't have Instagram? No, I don't. I'm okay. still working on that. So I'll, I'll get my Instagram in there. Hopefully, we can get him set up some Instagram. <laughs> He it's needs ridiculous. to. So, uh, talking about Fred Flintstone. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <This guy right laughs> here. But, uh, like I said, if you guys share the video in any type of form at all, you know, make sure you let me know. Either take a screenshot of it. Like I said, we will draw next Sunday night and I will announce the winner on Monday night live stream. So, um, I don't know if Gabe would be up here or not, but like I said, we will announce it and uh, get that done. And like I said, I'll put everything in the description of tomorrow's video that's dropping in the morning. So, that's all I got for tonight, guys. I appreciate it, and we'll see you guys again next time. All right. Thanks, guys.